passion and hard work that has been able to aid him and he is at this particular time very happy saying he is a woman official who will be at the FIFA World Cup for women this year. He sat with Kelvin Kimadi, Kelvin Kimadi sorry, and Kimadi did file this report, which I will be leaving you as we wind up today's edition of KTN Scoreline. I'm Erin Jeroge, I'm a FIFA assistant referee. Hi Mary, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Leo, we found a place of Numanga happy by the Ah, uh, Kama 40 EV. How normally do you do that? I do it daily uh -huh. after training, after every training. Okay. Yeah. And uh, talking about training, how fit <coughs> does one has to be to be a, a referee? You have to be at your peak. <laughs> at your peak means uh, how? Physically fit, you have to be physically fit. You have to pass the fitness test and the medical test. It all starts with medical. Yeah. And now you're living uh, to France, the first Kenyan woman to officiate in the FIFA World Cup. Yes. Definitely, that's a big achievement for you. I mean, how did you receive that news? Uh, I received the news after officiating in Cameroon, uh, Alcon Women in Cameroon 2016. Uh, I remember I was officiating uh, university matches. Then after that, I received an email I was invite, invited to officiate in Portugal. It's called Algarve Cup. So that is when the project started. It started in 2016. I mean, for you getting uh, there, talking about a big achievement, definitely World Cup. But it didn't start like that, though. You have a long journey. You started as a footballer <laughs> and then uh, went on transition to a referee. Yeah. Can you maybe take me through that uh, step? How did you exactly start to up to where you are right now? Uh, I never watched football, leave alone playing. But uh, after school, uh, that is when I was introduced to a team back home. Young girls were playing, but I, I didn't want to. But then they invited me, they were going for a tournament in Maisa, so they invited me to go and watch them play. And okay, I, I accepted the invite. Though I was like, what am I going to watch? It's football. I don't like football. <laughs> but I went with them in a long skirt, of course. <laughs> and uh, after watching the young girls play, I was like, I can do this. And that is when it all started. When I went back, we, when we went back home, I told them, I told the officials, I want to play football. And uh, I joined the team. We played, but uh, unfortunately, most of the girls were sitting for their exams. So when time came, the parents, uh, the parents insisted that no, there is no playing football now. You have to concentrate on your studies, and we stopped playing football because m uh, most of the girls in the team were students. Yeah. Now here transition to the way we come up with. Yeah. I was a diehard fan of the Congo Boys. So I was a fan of the So that day, uh, in that field, I was a four matches. So I was a game of Congo the second match. So as we were watching the game, uh, one of the fans, official, uh, about the team and I explained to him, but now there's nothing else I can do and 
akaniuliza but i understand kuna class inaendelea in kikuyu from the class ya nini ya referee so what about the class and so me know you can be a referee and i was like no way because sasa then tulikuwa tuna chukia maref wametufanyia nini i told him no 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 way I'm, i can't be a referee wacha tu nikuwe fun that was the second match he told me to think about it so the third match nika switch sasa attention nika kwa referee and after game ya nne hiyo ya mwisho i had made up my mind i want to go to class and that i told him nataka kwenda ku soma and ndio nikaenda kulikuwa na class siku hiyo and i joined them now you already gone to class and you gotten the license to participate that is our officiate in the country yes. but how hard was it to get uh, to officiate in the Nafia Super League and Kenya Premier League bearing in mind these are men's game and uh, the stereotypes around women's referee yeah. how hard was it for you uh, in fact after after class i didn't officiate immediately after class i left ni kaenda kufanya shughuli zingine for 2 years then uh, nikakutana na mwalimu my instructor walikuwa bado wanachezesha huko akaniuliza oh, ni nini ili happen then i told him i it was i was not i was not really convinced that i can be a referee <laughs> but then i told him i we can i can try and i was appointed for a match i didn't have uniform while in there and that is how it started Ukianza I know it's uh, it's not one of the easy <coughs> thing to do in the Kenyan football because uh, pesa pia ni shida. How hard was it uh, for you to, to to concentrate on referring but at the same time you need to pay your bills? Uh in fact then issue ya pesa haiko imeingia kwa mind. Haiko imeingia ati ni kitu tu about football. I just want to be in football. The passion. Yes, the passion itself. So niliingia nika nika point two again i went for the match and uh, kutoka hapo ni mechezesha game tu kwa mtaani for for a long time quite a long time but mwanzo ilikuwa disoired i was the first female referee huko mtaani and they were like how utaenda kukimbia aje na wanaume kwa kiwanja so hawakuwa wamekubali but i remember there was a time uh, they invited damaris kemani huko nyumbani they invited her to finish the match yeah. so wakaona okay sio hapa tu kwetu hata yeah. huko nairobi yeah. kuna yeah. kuna madem so damaris then alikuwa anachezesha premier league yeah. and then this other time they invited uh, maculet uh, wakuja kuchezesha huko so wakuja waki wakielewa so all the female referees in Kenya so she's not the first one so while the end that we go and they accepted they accepted me and now here you are in the Kenya Premier League uh, a lot of the big teams the likes of Kogalo uh, Ingwez na kokana mashabiki wengine eh yes sana very passionate a lady officiating such kind of a match feedback in when you departed the first few days with your KPL in Kwa Ah uh, mwanzo vile nikuja KPL. Ah uh, ilikuwa bado cuz sikuwa nimezoea stadium kama hii. Mm. Sikuwa nimezoea stadium. Yeah. Nilikuwa nimezoea huko uh, unajua huko mtaani unachezesha fan akiwa hapa. Yeah. Akiwa hapa nyuma yako. Yeah. So wakienda kufunga and it was an offside yeah. when you want to flag yeah. amevuta flag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when I came here, I remember my first game in the Premier League in Kwapa Nyayo Stadium. So I'm like, okay, hakuna fan hapa karibu. So hata nikikimbia kwa line, I'm like, oh, hakuna fan. I na confirm tu kwamba hakuna mtu amenikaribia wako huko juu. But uh, you know, ukitoka hapa chini, then this is a Premier League match. Uh, of course I was nervous. I was nervous, but Uh, with the referees i was with the male referees support wali nipea wali nipea support 
And uh, over the years, the matches that we've covered uh, officiated here locally, that is in the Kenya Premier League, which is that one match that you, you find that uh, it was really challenging for you, the decisions uh, you made in that match and the reception of the decisions you made? Mm, I can't really remember. But of course, the, the derby. I've, I've officiated in the derby. Mashemeji derby? Yes. Okay. I've officiated Mashemeji derby and slam derby. Yeah. Slam derby, that's Matare Keshaks. Matare, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, uh, you know, before, before the derby, I had done gold Maya matches and AFC matches with different teams. But now this is the derby. Uh, when you receive the appointment, the that was the first W and I was like, oh my god, I'm doing the W. Yeah. It's me now. Yeah. And I had to prepare myself. I had to prepare. And I had to call one of my seniors. Not Actually not one, a few of them. Yeah. How do you people prepare? What am I supposed to do? This is a derby. Yeah. The stadium is fully packed. Yeah. And you know how passionate the fans are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I I took the advice mm -hmm. and it really worked for me. Yeah. So it's just me and the players. And now apart from uh, the local scene which uh, definitely you conquered, how many international tournaments have you covered the likes of under 17 AFCON? I, I know you have also covered AFCON, that is the Africa Women's Cup of Nations. Yeah. Um, I've done qualifiers, uh, calf qualifiers, and uh, I have also officiated uh, three African women. What do we call African women? What? <laughs> African Women Cup of Cup Nations. Cup of Nations, yeah. Alcon. Yeah. I did in 2014 in Namibia, yeah. I did 2016 in Cameroon, and last year in Ghana. Uh, last year, I also officiated under 20 World Cup in France. And uh, this year, I did uh, Algarv Cup. Of course, I have done Algarv Cup in I did 2017, 2018, and 2019. That's in Portugal, and I received the invitation for for the course in Morocco. The selection course to under 17 in Tanzania. So when I received the invitation, I thought it's just for the course. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't go for the course in Morocco because we had another course in Doha. So I went in Doha and they went to Morocco. Then after Doha, in two days after Doha, that's when I received another invitation to the tournament. I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> this is a male tournament. Yeah. This is a Cup of Nations for under 17. And Mary is one of the officials. Yeah. We were three ladies, one from Tanzania, the other one from Madagascar, and Mary from Kenya. Yeah. yeah. How was it's, the experience? <sighs> I would say it was, it was a nice one. It was the best experience officiating in such a tournament. And uh, with the preparations, I, I expected, I kind of expected that it would be, it will not be easy because these are young boys, yeah, yeah. young men, and yeah. they're just running, running, running. So I had to prepare myself yeah. physically, mentally. And now here we are, it's a male tournament. Yeah. The, first, the first batch of female referees. So we have to deliver. Yeah. We have to show and we have to prove people. We have to prove, we had to prove the the appointing authority that we can make it. And the door opened for female referees in Africa. And uh, we, had to, we had to give our best. 
so that for them to consider ladies in their next tournament, big tournament. And definitely by the look of things here, you did well because a few months later, guess what? Mary, hi, how are you? I'm coming, fine. <laughs> coming to officiate in the FIFA Women's World Cup. Yes. It's a big thing for you. It, it really is. Yeah. I, in Tanzania, I officiated three matches. Yeah. One of them being the third place. Yeah. Big achievement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, after that, that is when the... Okay, the list was released after Doha. The final list to the World Cup. So this was part of preparation, but I I had to perform in under 17 because it was still part of preparation to to World Cup, yeah. and I thank God all went well. Yeah, and here I am. And uh, where were you specifically that moment? Well, what were you doing when you got uh, that call that you're in that list? I want to know everything about that uh, that call. I was preparing to go for training in the evening and that's when I received an email before I left the house actually and uh, these emails from FIFA that this is the final list I couldn't believe it I read the email again and again I downloaded the files and my name was there. I I can't even explain the feeling. Yeah. I just started crying. Yeah. Actually, I didn't even go for training. Yeah. I just couldn't. Now here you are. It's so real. You're going to the World Cup already. And uh, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big thing for you. And also, this, the matches that are played in the World Cup uh, are really high intensity matches and uh, yeah. from fans, from other uh, players. Really <coughs> How are you prepared, uh, you know, mentally and physically going to the World Cup? Uh, I've prepared. Yeah. I've done my part. Yeah. Really, I've done my part because with the trainings, with uh, the physical part of it, we have uh, our training plan sent from FIFA. The training plan is what we're supposed to do in a week, in a month. So that's what I've been following. And I believe that I've, I've done my best. And uh, talking about the intensity matches of the World Cup again, how hard is it, especially in a final, maybe in the quarterfinals are going to the final? How, how easy is it for a referee to make that one decision that uh, might cost the one team <laughs> and the Lord? How easy is it for you guys, the pressure to make the right decision with no time? Uh, let me tell you. Yeah. All the matches, whether it's quarter or the group stages, they're the same. Because there is, there's no match, there's no any match that you are allowed to make such a mistake. Yeah. So you make a mistake here, yeah. the other one makes a mistake there, it's a mistake. It doesn't matter whether it was a semi-final or what, you made a mistake. So, and we are human. Yeah. We make mistakes, human errors at times. But uh, you find that the pressure is there from the word go, from the very first game. Because we have to perform from the start to the end. And now uh, FIFA announced that uh, we are video assistants that are even interested the women's World Cup this time around. How, how, how convinced are you with that? Uh, I would say I'm prepared for that. If you want to play football, give your all. It pays. If you can switch to be a referee, welcome. And uh, to those who are already referees, be patient. Keep working hard. Persevere. Praying. Give your all. And be patient. God's time is the best. I've really waited for this for so long. And here I am.